welcome to lecture number 68 and today we will uh, start some new topics and uh, if you recall that uh, in some previous few lectures we have discussed about uh, uh, the uh, graph theory applied to network analysis. I have only uh, considered uh, uh, I have not uh, really discussed about graph theory in great detail. It is a different subject in its own right, but just the relevant portions which are necessary to solve network problems that I have discussed. You must understand there are various properties of A matrix, B matrix, this, that. We are not going to discuss in the network analysis problem. But one good thing is that in graph theory what happens this uh, 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 this graph theory is uh, looking at the uh, at the graph of a network and the directed graph we can easily identify oh this can be associated with currents and these are the node voltages things like that. And there may be of course, situations for example, in this case y matrix is like this 1 by 2 things like that. It may so happen between two nodes there is no uh, impedance connected. Suppose an ideal battery is connected across A and B, then the value of z y will be infinitely large. In such cases ok that y matrix uh, or the nodal analysis I can avoid and I can apply the z matrix. z matrix will be finite z is equal to 0 if uh, there is an ideal battery across a b. Similarly, there may be a current source only connected between two nodes in that case uh, z matrix will have infinite value and you cannot proceed further. In such cases uh, nodal approach will be appropriate. There are techniques uh, you can uh, if there are voltage source ideal voltage present between two nodes that can be uh, transferred to other nodes and try to solve the circuit. Those are the things if time permits I will discuss one day, but that is not the big issue. Big issue is you uh, one of the approaches you can adopt after all for a large network you are going to do it you can write your codes the formation of z q or a matrix is very simple that is what you have to do then you enter those data then solve this uh, equation or in other case uh, equations involving loop impedance matrix or nodal impedance matrix. Anyway, uh, you solve problems small small problems on that. Now, today uh, I will be uh, telling you ok there may be circuits till now we have considered circuits circuits uh, or networks. Uh, having having independent <coughs> voltage uh, current sources. that is any source present they are independent. What uh, do I mean by uh, this term independent? It means that whatever parameters are connected in the network R, L, C, this, that uh, the terminal voltage if it is an ideal voltage source is independent what you are connecting across it that will remain independent. Similarly, whatever current sources are connected in the circuit if it is an ideal current source the current in that branch is independent of what you are connecting in other branches or it does not depend upon that uh, parameters uh, uh, which we have connected to form the network 
apart from the sources. So, that is why those sources are called independent voltage or current sources. This is in fact we have done that, but there may be circuits uh, where the uh, for example, if I draw it you will understand it better what I mean to say. Suppose, you have a network like this, here is a current source, here is another voltage source like that. Okay. So, these, these, these are the symbols for independent sources say E 1, E 2 or this is say some current source these parameter values are known. Now, what I am telling is no matter what is the value of R 1, R 2, R 3. Mind you, I am writing resistances in S domain you can write it E 1 S, E 2 S, R 1 S, Z 1 S, Z 3 S, Z 2 S. I think you know this now. Now, uh, so the, these sources E 1 is an independent source because no matter what is the value of R 1, R 2, R 3, this voltage between these two points is going to be E 1 always. Similarly, uh, this current in this path will remain I no matter what is the value of R 1, R 2, R 3 or Z 1, Z 2, Z 3. That is why they are called independent. So, independent sources are re, uh, generally drawn in the circuit with this uh, independent sources. They can be AC, DC what not. They can be uh, if it is a small battery it will be shown like this E independent source or a big DC supply that is generally shown by a circle and this one say 100 volt DC. Is not? These are the representation of independent sources and uh, there may be uh, AC voltages. these are the representation of independent sources. Now, the question is what are then dependent sources? <coughs> to tell verbally a dependent source is in a network which might have several branches, several nodes etcetera. If suppose I say that uh, in one of the branch there is a voltage source whose magnitude depends upon current in some other branch. Okay. Similarly, current in one branch may depend upon the voltage in some other branch. Then those sources will be dependent sources. Let us take a simple example to explain the idea. Suppose, you have a network like this, this is the symbol for independent source. This is suppose R 1 and uh, uh, this is suppose R 2, this is another, another source here, there is and may be a current source there. These are independent sources, but I may say that current in this branch, this one what I will do is this, this current whatever is the magnitude whenever it flows there will appear a voltage in this branch with this polarity the value of which is k into i. k is a known constant may be 2 i. Got the point? Therefore, uh, this, this one is a dependent voltage source. Dependent voltage source.
the unit of k will be volt per ampere. So, that this becomes volt. So, a dependent uh, voltage source may will be represented all dependent sources will be represented by a diamond like this and uh, uh, the voltage across this uh, one will depend may depend upon current in some other branch of the circuit for example, k i 1 what is I 1? I 1 is current in some other branch, a definite other branch of the circuit. When I 1 flows between these two points, a voltage k I 1 will appear or, or another dependent voltage source may be plus minus the voltage between these two points will depend upon uh, voltage uh, across some other branch V 1 may be. So, in that case k will be unitless and uh, what is V 1? V 1 is the voltage in some other branch number 1 whatever it is that will be very clearly specified. So, uh, so this dependent volt will be marked with polarity with a diamond shaped thing like this and the relationship uh, that is what is the magnitude of the voltage will be also clearly written. So, that you know what it is on which so, so naturally the voltage between these two points will depend upon voltage in some branch which is V 1 it simply tells that. So, uh, similarly uh, you can have a current source current dependent source which will be also represented by diamond shaped like this, but this time the polarity instead of that the direction of the current will be mentioned. So, these are dependent voltage source representation I am talking about dependent voltage source. Similarly, dependent current sources will be represented like this. So, magnitude of this current may depend upon uh, some current in other branch in that case k will be dimensionless or uh, dependent current source uh, here the magnitude of this current with the direction specified as we have specified clearly the voltage polarity. Uh, it may also depend upon some voltage in some other circuit other branch understood. So, so, uh, some there may be some sources which uh, is uh, not a neither a ideal battery or a current source as we have dealt with earlier and those are called independent sources. They now in some branch this voltage or current sources if they are drawn it may depend upon some value of current in some other branch or value of voltage in some other branch, but clearly this uh, polarities will be mentioned and things like that. <coughs> For example, uh, now why, why, why do they come into why, why we are interested to know how to solve circuits which are having both independent and dependent sources. What is the reason for that? Reason is uh, there are situations for example, in a mutually coupled coil circuit if at any time this voltage is V 1 if it is transformer the voltage uh, between these two point will be V 1 by N 1 into N 2 N 1 by N 2 is a constant. Therefore, here suppose you have connected a voltage source which is V 1 that is why this voltage has become V 1. 
then the potential between these two points gets fixed because of this thing say transformer ideal transformer similarly when uh, a current is uh, delivered here i2 the current in this branch drawn from the supply gets fixed by this current i2 which will be equal to i2 by uh, n1 into n2 got the point so here we can assume there is a current source in series with this so th this is for mutually coupled coil similarly there may be situations for example a transistor uh, common emitter transistor operating in active region the collector current is beta times the base current is not L like this for example you have a circuit like this this base current beta and this collector current here uh, plus vcc etc this this current is beta into ib if the transistor is in the active region and this magnitude of the current is uh, not dependent upon what is the value of rc so current in this branch is fixed by the base current beta times that beta is that transistor constant that is the amplification factor of the between collector current and base current so collector current ic will be beta times the base current so there may be situations like that we are not discussing those circuits but in general what we will do you uh, tell you is this that okay in a circuit if a circuit is given with both the dependent sources and independent sources present then how to analyze those circuits that will that way i will introduce to you and nothing is better than uh, take an example for because we know already how to analyze a circuit uh, uh, problem so in the same way we will go we will write down kvl kcl or whatever method maybe thevenin's theorem to find out currents uh, in various branches or nodal method so here uh, it will be so i will explain this whole uh, thing by considering a network problem where both dependent and independent sources are present and would like to find out the currents in the circuit so let us take one example for example i take this simple network which is uh, suppose i give you a network like this here is a resistance here is a voltage source 10 volt is this a dependent or independent source it is independent source this is the how it is specified this is suppose a 6 ohm resistance connected 6 ohm and here i show it with a different different color here it is shown like this okay and uh, then you have a resistance connected here say 2 ohm so 2 ohm 6 ohm and this is 4 ohm given and it is given to be a voltage source so this is a dependent source this one who tells me that this symbol dependent source dependent source and uh, now uh, on what thing the magnitude of the is it a voltage or current source it is a voltage dependent source it will be a voltage source 
dependent depends on some currents or voltage in other parts of the circuit suppose it is given that e whenever uh, this current is i1 the magnitude of the voltage is 2i1 here okay so so this is well defined circuit now now suppose i say that i want to find out the currents in various branches of the circuit so there is a dependent voltage source there is an independent voltage source like there now how to find out the currents this calculations will be uh, pretty simple in uh, various ways you can do because i know how to solve a network i will treat this while writing down the equations as a voltage source of magnitude 2 i 1 and so on now the point is how to solve it there are various ways of solving this network and uh, first let us see that uh, in this network in this outer loop there is only one unknown i1 i have to form one equation involving i1 if i if i can do that my problem is solved so co consider this this loop and write down the try to write down the kvl in that equation got the point so how to do it let us assume this current to be i2 if this is i2 the current in this branch will be i1 minus i2 so what i will do i have to actually two unknowns are there i1 and i2 so i take this uh, outer loop or any loop you take outer loop suppose i take then i start from this point from this to this what will be the voltage drop here plus minus 4 i1 so 10 volt from this to this 10 volt then minus if any mistake point out minus 4 i1 then i reach this point and then from this to this it is a voltage source with this polarity so minus 2 i1 i reach this point and the voltage between this two point is 2 i2 is not with this polarity so minus 2 i2 and i have come back to this point no drop here so that is equal to 0 so one equation is therefore 6i1 take everything on the right hand side plus 2i2 plus 2i2 and it is equal to 0 is equal to 10 this is equation 1 my goal is to solve for all the currents in various branches of the network so that is the first equation second equation is i would like to develop another equation uh, which i can do that any loop this loop will also do hmm? so i write down the kvl equation in this loop what will be the kvl equation in this loop so this will be once again 10 volt minus 4 i1 then i come here this will be minus 6 i1 minus i2 and you reach this point and this is equal to 0 is this is equal to 0 i1 minus i2 clear so this will be 0 which is equal to or this one is 10 minus 10 i1 plus 6 i2 minus plus 6 i2 is equal to 0 or or you get uh, minus 10 i1 this equation i am writing here minus 10 i1 plus 6 i2 is also 
10 this is equation 2 is not therefore i will be able to solve these two equations so equate these two you will get the relationship 6 i 1 plus 2 i 2 is equal to minus 10 i 1 plus 6 i 2 or 16 i 1 is equal to 4 i 2 is not to you take to this side. So, therefore, uh, 4 i 1 is equal to i 2. Then use any of these equations for example, i 2 you substitute. So, you say 6 i 1 6 i 1 plus 2 i 2 2 into i 2 means 4 i 1 is equal to 10 or you will be getting 6 plus 8 14 i 1 is equal to 10 or i 1 is equal to 10 by 14 is equal to um, 5 by 7 ampere. If i 1 is this uh, then i 2 is equal to 4 i 1 4 i 1 and uh, that will be 20 by 7 ampere. So, I have been able to solve the circuit all the branch current etcetera. Did I apply any new theory? No. I applied simple KVL, KCL and so on. If I wish I could also apply nodal analysis. For example, I say that this point is O, this point is A then also you can write at a kcl will be va0 potential of a with respect to o o is reference point minus 10 divided by 4 plus va0 divided by 6 is this one and plus current in this branch. This current will be potential of this point will be V A 0. Then to uh, potential of this point with respect to O will be V A 0 minus 2 I 1 2 I 1 and then that voltage appears across 2 that is 2 this is equal to 0 this is one equation. And the other equation uh, is uh, uh, V A 0 and I 1 you write some loop equations for example, uh, V A 0 and I 1 can be related here. And similarly, the other equation you write down K C L and you see that uh, V A 0 by 6 is nothing but i 1 minus i 2 and so on. So, same results you will get at the end, but what I am telling you can apply nodal analysis you, you complete this problem with this method got the point and you will get the same result. So, what is the current in this branch? Suppose, this is the load resistance this current is i 2 and I 2 is 20 by 7 ampere you note it down 20 by 7 ampere will be flowing here. Then you have solved for um, I 1 also that is 5 by 7 ampere and then I 1 minus I 2 I can calculate and get this current. Is that clear? 5 by 7 ampere. 20 by 7 ampere is there. So, you can solve this network by any method you like. Now, uh, so here is a voltage source which is independent and here is another voltage source which is dependent and it is telling that the magnitude of the voltage with this polarity across this whenever I 1 flows this magnitude get decided with this polarity plus minus. 
that is all otherwise uh, nothing uh, very complicated situation like that. We will, so it is better you uh, only I will give you some circuits in my next lecture and tell you how to solve those network problems having both dependent as well as independent source. Thank you.